So we're going to do some dexterous algorithm by hand first and make sure we understand it. And then we're going to go do dexterous algorithm on, um, what's it called? We're going to go do dexterous algorithm on a actual example. So um, it's really cool. It was invented by this guy or published, I guess, by this guy. His name is Dijkstra. He's super awesome. And um, 1959, the biggest thing is that it um, has to have non-negative costs on your map. So like if we've got a map that looks something like this, this works great. Um, this is a wonderful map for Dijkstra's. What would make it a bad map for Dijkstra's is if it had like a negative sign in there. And if it had a negative sign, we'd have to use a Bellman, except I can't spell. Let's see. Yeah, Bellman Ford algorithm in order to do it with the negatives. Um, and it's a lot more expensive in terms of computation. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's um, not a pretty problem. But these are definitely a pretty problem. I love Dijkstra's algorithm. It's like my favorite little pathfinding algorithm ever. Um, so basically what you've got is you've got this map, um, all end nodes. Now, the way this is drawn, um, you can safely assume that it costs three to go this way and three to go this way, that it's, a, I guess, a bidirectional graph or something like that. Um, so the idea is, like, say we wanted to start here, okay? If this is where we're going to start, um, and we want to find how far it takes to get everywhere. So um, we're going to say, well, all of these are currently infinity away. So actually, I'm going to switch to a different color so you can see better. So these are all infinity away. Infinity, infinity, infinity. Come here, girl. Infinity and infinity. They're all infinity away. Okay, they're all unvisited. We haven't been anywhere on this map. All right, so the first point that we're going to start off is going to be A, just for no particular reason. And the distance to get to A, instead of being infinity, is zero. Okay, so um, we're just going to say it's not infinity anymore. Um, it costs zero to get to A from A, right? Kind of makes sense. It costs zero to get there from where I am. All right, now um, what we want to do is uh, this is kind of where our algorithm starts. So this is like the setup. And now we're going to enter kind of like a while loop. So we're going to find the um, unvisited node with the smallest distance. Well, right now, all of the nodes are unvisited, and they all have a distance of infinity, except for the first one, which has a dis distance of zero. So clearly, that has to be the um, smallest one. So um, we're going to set our current node as A. And then what we're going to do is we're going to update the distances to everywhere we can get to from A based by adding zero plus whatever the distance is. And if it's smaller, we'll update it. All these are going to get updated right now because everything's infinity. So we have 0 is currently where I am. 0 plus 3 is 3. So basically, it cost me 0 to get to A, 3 more, and then to get to B would cost me 3. Is 3 less than infinity? Well, yeah. So that means we can get rid of the infinity, and we can write a 3. Okay? Then we'll say, all right, again, oops, <laughs> we start at 0. Actually, I'm going to make that like, no, I like it. Um, we are at zero. Um, it takes 11 steps to get to C. So zero plus 11 is 11. 11 is less than infinity, which is awesome. So instead of the distance to C being infinity, it's now 11. Okay. Um, and don't do the thing where you're like, oh, I could go from here to here to here. We're not doing that. We're only doing things that are directly connected to A. So again, A takes zero to get there. 10 more steps to get to D. Zero plus 10 is 10, which is definitely less than infinity. So the distance to D is, at worst, 10. The nice thing about this is now with this algorithm, at any given point, um, we know that for sure the distance to B isn't any greater than 3. Like, there might be a faster way to get to C, but it's not any longer than 11. Okay, so now that we've gone to all the places we can, we're going to mark the current node as visited. So that means that it's done. We have visited this node we are happy. We never, ever, ever come back here. That is 100% absolutely for realsies. The fastest way to get to A is to start at A. <laughs> From A is to start there. Okay. Anyway, now the next thing. Now we're going back to the beginning of our little while loop. We're going to find the unvisited node with the smallest distance. So all of these here are unvisited. The one with the smallest distance is the three. Alrighty. So we're like, okay, so this is where we're starting from right now. We're starting at B. Okay, so I'm only going to go to vi places that haven't been visited, okay? Um, so I'm not going to go back here because, I mean, first of all, that would be a waste of time because it would be 3 plus 3 is 6. There's no way that 
3 plus 3 is going to be less than 0 because I've already proven that 0 is the shortest distance to get there. But I do have a 3. If I go 3 plus 4, that gives me 10. So, or not 10, 3 plus 4 gives me 7. So 7 is less than 10. So that means this new distance here is 7. I'm going to go ahead and erase or make them smaller. I just don't want you to lose sight of the fact that those used to exist. All right. So 3 can go step up by 4 to get there. The only other place that B can go that hasn't been gone already. So 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 is definitely less than infinity. So I can set that as a 10. Yay! And that's everywhere I can go from here. So I'm officially done. And I don't know really why I started writing things in a different color. But that 3 is definitely the 3. The quickest way to get to B um, takes three steps. Now, you might be wondering, well, we're losing the path as we go, which is true. Um, you can adjust this algorithm to keep track of where you came from. Um, it's not really hard, but I think it's unnecessary at this point of just trying to understand what the algorithm does. Okay, next thing. Now I'm going to find the unvisited node with the smallest distance value. So here are all the unvisited nodes, and the smallest distance value is D. So look at that we're not going in alphabetical order. The order in which the nodes appear has absolutely nothing to do with anything. It just so happened that the first time I accidentally went to B, but this time I'm going to D. So C, I'm not going in alphabetical order. If I go to C instead, the whole thing falls apart. You have to go to D next. You always, always, always have to go to the one that has the lowest value. So I've got D. D 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 is definitely less than 10 because it is 8. So that's now 8. Um, so I had the 7 before. Um, I guess I probably would have gone this way first, just al algebraically. 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 is also definitely less than 11. So I've got an 9 here. Yay, 9! All right. All right, next thing. Uh, 7 plus 4 is 11, which is definitely less than infinity. All right, and that's everywhere I can go. So that means I'm going to go ahead and mark this one here as visited. So this has been visited. I can't come back here ever again, but I know for sure as ease now that that 7 is the fastest way to get there. Back to the beginning of our for loop again. We're going to find the unvisited node with the smallest distance value. So our options are 8, 9, and 11. So I'm going to go with 8. Okay, so let's see. What am I going to do from 8? Um, 8. There's only one place I can go. Plus 9 is 17. Uh, 17 is not less than 11, so I can't do anything about it. I just have to leave it as 11. Um, that's kind of a dead end, which is fine. That was still better than the infinity we started out with, so that turns to um, a visited node, and we can say officially it takes 8 steps to get to that point at the most. All right, now i got only two more options. I go to the one with the smallest number, which in this case is going to be C. I'm going to update all the nearby unvisited nodes. So 9 plus 9 is 18. 18 is not less than 11. So again, I'm not going to make any changes. That's the only place I can go. So I mark it visited, and it is officially a distance 9 away. Now I'm going to, I know this seems stupid, but we're just doing this like a computer would. Look at all the nodes that are, un, nodes that are unvisited. Um, what did I do here? Oh, I left the 8. I was like, where'd that 8 come from? Looking at all the nodes that are unvisited, there's just one. The minimum one is 11. Now from 11, this is my current node. I'm going to go look at all the unvisited nodes from here, which are none of them. <laughs> there's nowhere to go. So that means that this is officially done. I mark this as visited, and it is officially a distance of 11 away. And so I keep going. Now all my nodes are visited. If I look for the largest unvisited node, there aren't any. So the while loop would exit out, and, and I'm done. And so this way I'm able to actually label um, the distances. So this is the distance from A. Now notice you can't necessarily tell without thinking about it what that path is. Um, but like I said, there is a way that you could have... Um, you know, recorded that information. But like, um, you know, I can just kind of look, see here and say, okay, it's three to four. Um, three, four, and one gets me to the eight. Or um, three, four, and two gets me to the nine. Or um, I guess the three, four, and the four gets me to 11. So I'm able to kind of just look at that and figure it out. But in general, um, 
it's kind of cool because all that information is done um, all at once for the entire graph. And I think it's not a very complex thing. I think it's like a login or something like that. Um, basically, uh, the more the, the more bigger <laughs> the bigger your graph gets, it doesn't get exponentially harder to do this. Um, it only gets like an easy easy bit harder, but not like crazy hard. So this is fun to do, and in a following video, I'll show you how to program this.